Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm Darren McBreen. It is Thursday, February 19th, 2015, and here's a quick look what's coming up. Tonight, Ron Paul says the U.S. youth been lauded as an excuse to invade other countries. And the origins of ISIS explained. That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. And don't tell me that I'm a weirdo because I'm upset about this. I'm just sick of dishonorable trash. Supreme Cobra Commander! You're failures! You think I'd sell my family out like you did back? Well, former senator and presidential candidate Ron Paul is once again making headlines, this time for his recent comments regarding the U.S. government's response, or lack thereof, to the September 11th terror attacks back in 2001. Ron Paul said in a radio interview published by BuzzFeed that the United States used bin Laden as an excuse to build up its military and invade other countries. They knew where bin Laden was. I don't think they really wanted to catch him because he was used as the excuse for us, uh, you know, invading various countries and building up the military. Well, you can't argue with that. I definitely agree with what Ron Paul said right there. And don't forget that there's been all kinds of whistleblowers and insiders who have come forward and said that Osama bin Laden was already dead. And we're talking a long time ago, way before the U.S. government claimed to have raided the bin Laden compound and killed him back in 2011. That was a total fabrication. Don't believe the hype. I mean, think about it. The number one international terrorist in the world He's captured and killed, yet there are no photographs of his body proving that he's dead. And for some unexplained reason, they actually tossed his body into the ocean. I mean, it makes no sense. And we're not the only ones who find this suspicious. Seymour Hirsch, for example, the Pulitzer Prize winning journalist, said the raid which killed Osama bin Laden in 2011 is one big lie. He also said that the mainstream media in the U.S. is pathetic for failing to challenge the White House about the bin Laden raid. Well, you, you can say that again. We also heard from Dr. Steve Pachinik. He's a frequent guest on The Alex Jones Show. Pachinik says that bin Laden died in 2001, and the U.S. government was waiting for the most politically expedient time to roll out the corpse. And this guy should know. I mean, he actually met bin Laden and worked with him during the proxy war against the Soviets in Afghanistan back in the early 1980s. Steve Pachinik, a former U.S. Navy captain, was the deputy assistant secretary of state under three different administrations, Nixon, Ford, and Carter. He also worked for the Reagan administration and Bush Sr., and he still works as a consultant for the Department of Defense. So he's not some crazy conspiracy theorist or internet blogger that uh, lives in his mother's basement. No, this guy is the real deal. Ever seen the movie Patriot Games starring Harrison Ford? Well, he plays the character of Jack Ryan from the popular Tom Clancy novels. Tom Clancy based the character of Jack Ryan off of Steve Pachinik. He's an expert in psychological warfare, counterterrorism, plus hostage rescue. He's the real life Jack Ryan, and he says the bin Laden raid was bullshit. According to Pachinik, bin Laden was a dead man back in 2001, even before the United States invaded Afghanistan. Of course, they, we needed a, a boogeyman as an excuse, like Ron Paul said, to invade other countries. And speaking of other countries, Iran says that the bin Laden raid was staged. That's right, they've gone public. That doesn't mean I trust the Iranian government, but in this case, I do agree with their analysis. The Iranian intelligence minister said they can prove that bin Laden was dead before the raid. They have documents that prove it. And they ask, if the U.S. military and intelligence apparatus have really arrested or killed bin Laden, why don't they show his body? Why have they thrown his corpse into the sea? Well, that's a damn good question. And why weren't the pictures ever released to the American public? I mean, supposedly, U.S. Special Forces had like 50-plus pictures 
of Osama bin Laden's dead, rotten corpse that were taken well after he was killed and before they tossed him into the ocean. But yet those pictures remain classified and top secret. And guess what? We're never gonna see them. The Department of Justice was ordered to destroy the bin Laden death photos just hours after they received a FOIA request to release them. That's right, U.S. Special Operations Commander Admiral William McRaven ordered his subordinates to destroy photos showing the corpse of Osama bin Laden just hours after a FOIA lawsuit seeking the documents was filed in the United States Court for the District of Columbia. So the Pentagon, in a desperate move to keep the pictures out of the public domain, destroyed all the pictures. And uh, I, I sure would have loved to have seen them. I think they were fake, but I would have loved to have seen them anyway. And I'd like to get Biggs' take on all this. I mean, Biggs, doesn't it sound a little suspicious to you? I mean, here we got Doug Stanhope, the comedian, I think he said it best. The United States, they had the Bigfoot of terrorists, right? They capture the guy but yet they take no pictures of him or they don't release the pictures to the public and they dump his body in the ocean. Is that suspicious? What's your I mean, take? Not only that, I mean, the president is in bed with the Muslim Brotherhood. I mean, he's so supportive of Islam in every kind of way. He's afraid to say Islam extremists. He's afraid to say all this stuff because he keeps tiptoeing around the fact that these guys are out of control, they're radicals. So I find it hard to believe that the president then wants to take the body and throw it in the ocean, which goes against everything in Islam when it comes to burial. I did some research on it, and what they're supposed to do is dig a hole deep enough to where the smell cannot reach the earth, and predators will not go in and smell the bodies and go and dig it up. So throwing a body in the ocean goes against everything that Muslims believe in, and this coming from a president who's this huge Muslim sympathizer, <laughs> I just find that fishy as well. Well, I also think it's fishy that, it, look, if they release the pictures um, Barack Obama would have been a, a hero, even more so. I mean, his popularity obviously rose quite a bit after they supposedly killed bin Laden. But if they would have released the pictures, man, I tell you what, the cult of Obama, their fans would have loved it. And I think he would have got tremendous support from the public. What do you think? Yeah, exactly. And then another thing, we have Putin now saying that he has information that 9-11 was an inside job. And, you know, it makes you think, you know, if you have that kind of information about your enemy, you know, Russia, U.S., we've always kind of had, uh, you know, problems. you think that he would release the information about 9-11. But then I started thinking, too, at the same time we were speaking earlier, that would almost empower Americans to rise up, revolt. There would be a revolution against the government because so many people have bought into the narrative that, you know, that Osama bin Laden, you know, did this entire 9-11 attack all by himself. And, you know, these guys flew the planes into the towers and, you know, it caught us off guard, but you know, too many coincidences happen in one day for something like that just to have happened one-sided. Both parties knew about this and allowed it to happen. And of course, uh, we all believe that there was Saudi Arabian involvement and we'll never know for sure until they release the 28 pages. And I'm sure you're all aware of what happened to the Navy SEALs after the bin Laden raid. 30 Americans were killed in a crash on August 6, 2011, when insurgents shot down a U.S. military helicopter in eastern Afghanistan. 22 of the victims belonged to the same unit as the Navy SEALs team involved in the bin Laden raid. Now, the family members of the Navy SEALs want answers, and they say the Obama administration is hiding something. Guys from SEAL Team 6. Uh, their families suggest that the White House and others are lying about their deaths and what led to them. As soon as uh, Joe Biden announced that it was a SEAL team who took out bin Laden, within 24 hours, my son called me. His tone was extraordinarily serious. He said, you need to wipe your social media clean. I mean, you need to get everything off of it now. And I said, of course, son, I will. What's wrong? And he said, mom, there's chatter and your life is in danger. Our lives are in danger. Now, I want to make it clear, according to U.S. military officials, none of the guys who died in that helicopter crash were part of the Navy SEAL team raid on the bin Laden compound. Uh, that's according to U.S. Uh, officials. Yet we have sources that say otherwise, so believe who you want to believe. But it is true that many of the victims' families say the Obama administration was at least partially responsible 
for that deadly crash, in my opinion, to silence them for good. And now that bin Laden is officially dead and the good guys have killed him, well, we still need to have a boogeyman as an excuse, like Ron Paul was saying, as an excuse to invade other countries. Now, don't get me wrong, radical Islam is real, and they are a true and present danger to our country. But we still need to have a boogeyman as an excuse to go into other countries. And you gotta ask yourself, who organized and created these terrorist organizations to begin with? Who's funding them? Who's training them? And who's letting them loose to wreak havoc on the grand chessboard. When they used the radical Islamists with Saudi Arabian funding in 1979 under Zbigniew Brzezinski's plan to launch wars, not just in Afghanistan, but areas bordering Afghanistan to the north and to the west, forcing the Russians to come in to respond. That was a trap. So they didn't totally control the jihadis, they were funding them, they were arming them, and then later they were supposedly blowback on 9-11, but the door was opened, and Saudi Arabia was there running the operation, the 28 pages. Senator Graham of the 9-11 Commission has gone public, and I've talked to Walter Jones, a congressman. He's gone public, and Colonel Schaefer and everybody else, okay? So I was right again, period. So I'm gonna explain this to you. It isn't just black or white, where it's either 100% run or it is 100% run. Four and a half years ago, a program was launched in Libya, in Syria, and Egypt, and a bunch of other places to overthrow the governments and put radicals in. Obama and other Soros-connected groups, even above the CIA, they do this even outside government. This stuff's so criminal. Went in... And with Google Analytics and with Facebook behind it, they all met the same place Bilderberg met a few years ago. They met there a few years before that. Uh, they're north of London. This has all been publicly released and funded the Arab Spring where they get the students and everybody out the street. But then the radicals use that once they take over to coup d'etat the coup. And then now you have an Islamic state over Libya, over Saudi Arabia, which is already quarterbacking it, uh, over Syria, over Egypt. So, there's Wesley Clark. We have it on screen. Libya and Syria, the neocon plan to attack seven countries in five years using destabilization. Once you destabilize, you then have an excuse to come in and bomb the very groups you turned loose to begin with. So, Obama is acting like he's a moderate and that he's only fighting, you know, some of the radicals because, you know, he loves Islam so much. The truth is... They're doing limited airstrikes on different disparate rebel groups that are in there battling for control of Syria that the West opened the door for to get them buggy whipped into line so that then they can be forged into a new army to go in and take out Syria. And the excuse will be because of the Syrian civil war that gave ISIS a home base, that gave Al Qaeda a home base. And so now we've got to go in and clean out the whole country. It's Assad's fault. We've already heard this. You're going to hear it again. That's why they're saying, oh, we're there with rebels now, calling in airstrikes and giving them weapons with billions of dollars of funding that Congress has passed in three different spending packages the last four or five months. Billions of dollars. And it's in the Wall Street Journal that, well, the good rebels are being given vehicles, and they're allowed to launch attacks. And then you'll see these very vehicles in a month flying ISIS flags, and no one will go, wait a minute, we gave them that. Or, or they might say, oh, yeah, ISIS captured it. Just like they captured Iraqi bases full of artillery and new weapons and RPGs, like the Marines and the Army just left those weapons caches in bases and didn't defend them or didn't have self-destruct bombs, didn't have detonators already placed to blow up ammo dumps. They let them have it. All they need is the plausible deniability, just like Benghazi and the heat-seeking missiles, the anti-aircraft surface-to-air missiles. The knowledge of the ancients, tried and true, true.
trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. For a limited time, get 25% off on this introductory offer. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. Ancientdefense.com. Used since before the days of the Roman Empire to support the body's natural systems and enhance overall health. Introducing the new InfoWarsLife.com Oil of Oregano Formulation, a highly advanced nutraceutical form of this key herb that has been traditionally used by civilizations for thousands of years to promote health. We have now procured the most high quality and potent forms of oregano oil on the market, sourced from top leading manufacturers to ensure a concentrated level of bioactive ingredients extracted directly from the wild herb and sealed in easy to use capsules you will no longer need to endure the burning of liquid oregano on the tongue wild crafted from the mediterranean oregano species that experts agree is one of the most powerful and most challenging to acquire this winter season it's more important than ever to secure this true form of oil of oregano now available in our limited first run at infowarslife.com that's infowarslife.com or call 888-253-3139 Now, back in the 1970s, when I was just a young lad, uh, I remember that all these TV commercials that they used to run on television, scaring the American public into taking their swine flu vaccines. Unfortunately, my mom, she, she fell for the propaganda and it, it scared her to death. I was rushed out, got the swine flu vaccine. Fortunately, I was not seriously harmed or even killed like many other Americans. And now Rob Dew, he's put together a special report we're about to show you right now with the vintage classic TV commercials included. You gotta check this out. It's very, very interesting. It's also interesting how the more things change, the more they stay the same. Flash forward to modern day America, we are still seeing an avalanche of propaganda to get us all to take our vaccines. And you're a crazy conspiracy theorist and a bad parent if you don't vaccinate your children, right? Well, now, you're not going to believe this, McDonald's is setting up free vaccine clinics in Texas. And guess what? You get a free ice cream once you get vaccinated. Here's Rob Dew. Hey guys, Rob Dew from Infowars.com and Infowars Nightly News. And I have a follow-up to the lengthy report that I put out just a couple days ago on the Alex Jones channel and on Prison Planet TV. That report is currently going viral, and I encourage you to watch it. I'll put a link to that report at the end of this one. But here I want to focus on Dr. Ann Shukit. She's the director of the National Center for Immunization and Respiratory Diseases at the CDC, and she was the one being interviewed by Senator Elizabeth Warren when they had that beautiful exchange of how vaccines were so safe and effective and that there was no credible science anywhere on the planet that could say otherwise. Definitely running cover for Big Pharma. So I wanted to take a look at Dr. Shukit, specifically her past, to see where she came from. I hadn't really seen much of her uh, looking at vaccines in the past, but she was out there, especially back in 2009-2010 flu season during the H1N1 scare, where they were trying to get everybody to get the H1N1 vaccine. And I found a couple of uh, transcripts from press conferences that she released. This one's from November 12, 2009 where she says, the immunization efforts with this supply continue to be focused on the target population priority groups, pregnant women, healthcare workers, children and young adults up to 24 and adults 25 to 64 with chronic conditions and parents and other caretakers with small children and children under six months of age. But what I'm specifically interested in is what she talks about in the beginning of that priority group section. It is pregnant women. Now I hold here in my hot little hand, 
the influenza virus vaccine flu zone, and this is from 2009-2010 formula. This is an old uh, insert that I was able to get back then. Here it says, under use in specific populations, safety and effectiveness of flu zone have not been established in pregnant women or nursing mothers or children under six months of age. So here in the insert, it says it's not even recommended for pregnant women. It hasn't even been studied on pregnant women or young children or nursing mothers. Flip it over on the back and it says this, under section eight, use in specific populations, pregnancy. Animal reproduction studies have not been conducted with flu zone vaccine. It is not known whether flu zone can cause fetal harm when administered to a pregnant woman or affect reproduction capacity. Flu zone vaccine should be given to a pregnant woman only if clearly needed. Under 8.3, nursing mothers. It is not known whether flu zone vaccine is excreted in human milk. Because many drugs are excreted in human milk, caution should be exercised when flu zone vaccine is administered to a nursing woman. So in two different spots, in this insert from the same year where Dr. Shukit was out there promoting it, that pregnant woman should get this vaccine, it says it should not be given and it has not been tested on pregnant women. There you go, once again, the CDC pushing dangerous chemicals and adjuvants and vaccines on people and on groups that they shouldn't even be targeting. And this is the insert that comes from the maker of the vaccine flu zone dated 2009-2010. So maybe in uh, November 2009, she hadn't got that information yet. Well, here she is in January on video during a press conference, specifically targeting pregnant women and nursing mothers. Here's that clip. This is a concerted effort of the CDC, Health and Human Services, and all of our partners to encourage vaccination. It includes a focus on people at high risk for complications, adults with emphysema, diabetes, cancer, children, pregnant women and seniors, really a focus on encouraging vaccination for anyone who hasn't yet been vaccinated and wants to be. Vaccine is still important for pregnant women and for postpartum women. They've had terrible complications from this flu virus. And although many have been vaccinated, we know others haven't. And we do encourage vaccination of pregnant and postpartum women. And doing my research in this 2009 swine flu epidemic, I also recalled the one that happened in the 70s. And, and this is one that we have lots of documentation of, especially of the dangerous effects of the vaccine. Swine flu? Man, I'm too fast to let it catch me. In fact, 60 Minutes did a report on it, and here's a couple clips. Remember the swine flu scare of 1976? That was the year the U.S. government told us all that swine flu could turn out to be a killer that could spread across the nation. Well, 46 million of us obediently took the shot. And now 4,000 Americans are claiming damages from Uncle Sam amounting to three and a half billion dollars because of what happened when they took that shot. By far the greatest number of the claims, two thirds of them, are for neurological damage or even death. So this vaccine was endorsed by the president. They used several other actor endorsements, including Mary Tyler Moore. And when she was asked by 60 Minutes, she had this to say. Mary, did you take a swine flu shot? No, I did not. Did you give them permission to use your name saying that you had or were going to? Absolutely not. Never did. Did you ask your own doctor about taking the swine flu shot? Yes, and at the time he thought it might be a good idea. Um, but I resisted it because I was leery of having the symptoms that sometimes go with that kind of inoculation. And when the head of the CDC was asked about this, here's what he had to say. Let me read to you from one of your own agencies memos planning the campaign to urge Americans to take the shot. The swine flu vaccine has been taken by many important persons, he wrote. Example, President Ford, Henry Kissinger, Elton John, Muhammad Ali, Mary Tyler Moore, Rudolf Nureyev, Walter Cronkite, Ralph Nader, Edward Kennedy, etc., etc. True? Uh, I'm not familiar with that particular piece of paper, uh, but I do know that at least of that group, President Ford did take the vaccination. Did you talk to these people beforehand to find out if they planned to take the shot? I did not know. Did anybody? I do not know. Did you get permission to use their names in your campaign? I do not know. So around 500 people developed Guillain-Barre syndrome, and at least 25 people died as a result of the vaccine. And that year, there were only 200 cases of swine flu reported, and ultimately only one death. So there you go, you see the CDC once again scaring the population into getting vaccines and injecting themselves with these chemicals and then just kind of backing away, oh, when there's a problem. If a swine flu epidemic comes, this is how it could spread. 
You'll want to be protected, especially if you're elderly or chronically ill. Get a shot of protection, the swine flu shot. Although the head of the CDC did get fired as a result of this scandal. Let me ask you another question. Where do you get your health advice from? Do you get it from McDonald's? Well, right now McDonald's is giving away free vaccines with Happy Meals in Texas. Do you want your hepatitis A shot with that Happy Meal? This is what Anthony Gucciardi says out of Natural Society. This program was actually happening in the city of Amarillo, and here's what the local paper had to say. The city of Amarillo's Department of Public Health and the Caring for Children Foundation of Texas will offer free vaccinations for children from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Saturday at McDonald's Restaurant on 815 South Grand Street. They were offering the meniococcal vaccine, varicella, uh, MMR, the Tdap booster vaccine, hepatitis A. In addition to letting people set up vaccination clinics on site of one of their stores, I have here a McDonald's coupon that says, well, if McDonald's, the role model of health, thinks it's a good idea, then it must be. And the coupon says, if you get immunized, bring your card in, you'll get a free vanilla cone. So now we should be taking our health advice from McDonald's, a company that puts actual silly putty and plastic products in the food that you eat. Are you loving it yet? And I want to end this report showing how the freedom-loving spirit can prevail in certain instances. Back in 2011, the Canadian press posted that measles among vaccinated Quebec kids questioned. And it talks about a case in Quebec where 52 of 98 teens who caught the measles vaccine were fully vaccinated. And this was a shock to the researchers that investigated it. And it's not a shock to me. In fact, here's a clip from Dr. Suzanne Humphreys talking about how people, after they get vaccinated, they actually shed the disease. I've got another study um, from uh, Croatia, and um, there were several cases of measles uh, outbreaks occurring in children who had just been vaccinated. And so they looked at um, the strain, they're, they're having intensive surveillance of measles during this period of time. And so they looked at, with, with this DNA or genetic fingerprinting, what strains they were. And it was the vaccine strain that they were infected with. So not only did they become, uh, they become sick from measles, from the strain that they were vaccinated with, but they were contagious. As a result of this and other stories, there's actually a family out there that started a daycare that's vaccine free. In fact, they don't wanna take any kids if they've had their vaccinations. Here it is from CBC News, vaccine-free daycare criticized by Ottawa Public Health. They say a vaccine-free environment is safer for young children because those who get the needle could, as Abaca calls it, shed some of the disease to others. We can just play and we don't have to worry about them contracting uh, something from sheddings. But Ottawa Public Health has a big issue with vaccine-free daycares, and it wants to get the message out to parents that the measles vaccine is both effective and very safe. And I think you're going to see a trend of this happening. People are going to start bucking the system, saying, look, we don't care what you're saying. We're not going to put this stuff into us. You haven't fully tested it. You're not being forthright. You've set up a secret court where we can't even get evidence from the vaccine companies and you just award judgments willy-nilly depending on semantics. No, people are starting to fight back and this is one way and I think you're gonna see a lot more of these and I hope to see a lot more of these in the United States where freedom-loving Americans are gonna put their foot down and say, we wanna have an environment where vaccine-free kids can get together and not just be pushed around by all you vaccine lovers out there. This has been Rob Dew for InfoWars.com and InfoWars Nightly News. If you like reports like these, please consider becoming a member of PrisonPlanet.tv. Your subscription can be shared with up to 20 people. That's 20 InfoWarriors for the price of one. I encourage you to become a member today. Thank you. For all of recorded history, civilizations around the world praised the health benefits of silver. At InfoWars Life, our mission is to bring you the highest quality, purest, cleanest, effective colloidal silver on the market today for the lowest price available. You don't have to be a doctor to know the fall and winter months are the most dangerous time of year in North America when it comes to you and your family's health. InfoWarsLife.com is very excited to announce our biggest run yet of silver bullet colloidal silver exclusively available at InfoWarsLife.com. Now, InfoWarsLife.com has taken colloidal silver to the next level using a cutting-edge technique that is free of toxic artificial additives. Now more than ever, it's important to stock up on high-quality silver bullet from InfoWarsLife.com.
mom and to help others during Christmas by teaching them about the powerful benefits of silver. Secure your silver bullet today at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. Introducing Secret 12, the new InfoWars Life Vitamin B12 formulation. Most forms of vitamin B12 are highly processed and synthetic and cannot be properly absorbed by the body. That's why for real results, so many are having to turn to painful B12 injections, which are known to have higher absorption rates. Now, InfoWarsLife.com is excited to announce that we can bring you our most bioactive, powerful form of B12 that has been developed with our exclusive perfected process. Secret 12 is a binary of nutramedical grade bioavailable coenzyme forms of B12, methylcobalamin, the same kind used in B12 injections, and adenosyl cobalamin. Secret 12 is simply taken by mouth, right on the tongue, and then swallowed. No needles, no injections. Don't take my word for it. Try it for yourself. Discover the secret. Secret 12. Secure your revolutionary Secret 12 formula right now at InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. So just what is Obama's proposed net neutrality plan? Well, that's the problem. Nobody quite knows for sure. The FCC has made it clear that they will not release the 332-page plan to regulate the Internet until after the agency votes on it. Other times we've heard this, we've got to pass it to find out what's in it. It hasn't really fared well for the American consumer. Now, one of the FCC commissioners, Ajit Pai, has gone rogue. He's been publishing a few articles in recent weeks. These are press releases that other FCC leadership has moved to block. And he's basically warning citizens and lawmakers that this net neutrality is a bad deal. Pai writes, while the plan contains no shortage of regulations, the most problematic may be the new Internet Conduct Rule. It's a vague rule that gives the FCC almost unfettered discretion to micromanage virtually every aspect of the Internet, including the choices that consumers have for accessing it. This includes restricting service plan options, including unlimited online streaming, as well as low price prepaid voice plans, which are used by millions of low-income households. When consumers have more choices, they can find lower prices, but the FCC wants to do away with anything but one-size-fits-all plans. Think of it like how all of your health insurance plans now include prenatal care, even if you're a 75-year-old retiree. Allowing for new business models is critical to promote competition. How can we expect entrepreneurs to stand out from their competition if they aren't able to compete with a standardized plan? Clearly, the president's plan is only going to benefit the existing Internet giants. But the issue is, the Internet isn't broke. We don't need the president to fix it. Pai says the Internet is an unparalleled success story. It is a free, open and thriving platform for civic and political engagement, economic growth, educational opportunity, entertainment, and much more. It has made the United States the epicenter of innovation. Plus, current law already protects consumers and competition online, and the president's plan would strip away those existing protections. The Federal Trade Commission has the authority to quickly protect consumers and aggressively police market power and fraud in the Internet economy. Regulating the Internet like a public utility would strip the FTC of these powers. Why would we want to do that when the Internet has flourished under the current regulatory model? Doesn't make sense. 79% of Americans want to see the plan before the vote on February 26th. Isn't it about time that Obama made good on his campaign promise to be the most transparent administration ever? How can we have an open debate about whether or not the president's plan to regulate the Internet is going to be good for the American consumer when it hasn't even been made public? All right, folks, that's going to do it for tonight's broadcast. The InfoWars Nightly News will return tomorrow evening at 7 o'clock p.m. Central Time. Until then, I hope you have a wonderful evening, and we'll see you back right here tomorrow night. Have a good one. In the past decade, we have witnessed unparalleled scientific discoveries in the area of health. 
but no one has put together a formula that focuses directly on brain health, nerve growth factors, and optimizing your cellular energy at the same time. DNA Force is one of the most expensive formulas to produce. Some of the ingredients in DNA Force are $12,000 a kilogram. We are using the coveted, patented, only American source of PQQ, CoQ10, and more. You want the best that's out there at the lowest price anywhere? Well, we're bringing you a total win-win. The ultimate value, cutting-edge, trailblazing game-changer that also supports the info war. We have produced a limited run of DNA Force, and it will take up to 12 weeks to produce more once we sell out. Secure your DNA Force today at InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. DNA Force from InfoWars Life. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. And your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.